60 Minutes Rewind. A viewer wrote us a while back and said, you really should take a look at the life and times of an inventor named Forrest Bird. We did and found in the panhandle of Idaho a remarkable American original. Over the last eight decades, Forrest Bird has seen enough history and rubbed elbows with enough legends to rival that other Forrest, Forrest Gump. Chances are, Forrest Bird's invention has saved the life of someone you know, maybe even your own. And though he may not be a household name, when inventors get together, Bird stands literally head and shoulders above the rest. It's the annual gathering of the National Inventors Hall of Fame, which honors America's visionary tinkerers, Patsy Sherman, who invented Scotchgard to protect the rug and the furniture. Dr. Harry Coover, who invented super glue to hold your stuff together, and Dr. Klaus Schmeigel, who invented Prozac to hold your head together. And standing tall among them, all six foot four of him, is Forrest Bird. His brainchild, the modern medical respirator, has given the breath of life to countless people around the world. It all began with a gizmo he cobbled together long ago to help a friend with emphysema breathe. I went to the hardware store and got a doorknob. You can see this doorknob right here at the top. <laughs> so the patient could take and push down like this on the doorknob and blow their lungs up. Well, he did remarkably well with it. What year are we talking about? We're talking about 1947. Did you have any idea then that you were on the trail to a device that would be just the most routine part of emergency medicine there is? No, sir, not the foggiest. I mean, this was seeing a problem and coming up with a rudimentary answer, that was all. Yeah. And that okay. answer came from one of this tinkerer's many passions, aviation. Bird is an old flyboy who still takes to the skies in a souped-up 1938 Piper Cub that belonged to his father. My daddy was a World War I pilot, and I just wanted to be able to fly like he did. Bird spent World War II delivering aircraft from the factory to the front and got to thinking along the way about the similarities between air flowing over the wings of a plane and air moving through the human lung. In that lung is rudimentary airfoils, like a million air, airplane wings all down through the lungs, in and out, all the way through the facilitate your normal spontaneous breathing. So it was just applying all of this taking it from aviation. Okay, put that on the end here. It sounds okay. simple enough, yeah. a concept even school kids can grasp. But in reality, the human lung works with mind-numbing complexity. For his own education, the military sent Forrest Bird to medical school. And though his studies took him to the outer limits of science, his next respirator was still definitely low-tech. These are strawberry shortcake tins here. <laughs> You're kidding. No, I am not, honest to God. They're strawberry Thank shortcake you. tins, they really are. <laughs> and what I did was, I put a diaphragm in here so that when you did that, it would drop the pressure and this magnet would grab it and hold it off. For a child with polio, a minute's breathing can mean his life. Back then, there weren't many options for people with respiratory problems. The worst cases required iron lungs, big, primitive, expensive, and confining. So Forrest Bird kept on, trying to develop a small, affordable device that could automatically help people breathe. His breakthrough came in the late 1950s, the Mark VII respirator, a device so effective, the Air Force made a training film about it, Hollywood music and all. Here's the star of our film, the Bird Mark 7 respirator. We were able to assist your respiration, we could control it. And this became standard use. Throughout the entire world. And still today, there's tens of thousands of these still functioning around. Improved models quickly followed. Thanks to his respirator for infants, the baby bird, the death rate for preemies was massively reduced. It's an amazing situation and a good happy ending. Donna Turnbull and her husband Bob, neighbors of Forrest Bird, have good reason to thank him for his baby bird respirator. It had been snowing and there was a black sheet of black ice on the highway and we hit it and so did another pickup truck and it ran right into us. She was in labor, 
Bob was driving her to the hospital that day in 1985. The accident nearly killed her, and doctors first thought the baby, Tim, was gone. They wouldn't look me in the eye, and I think, oh, what's going on? What's wrong? The doctors pronounced Tim dead, and they said he was stillborn. But when a faint pulse was discovered in the umbilical, baby Tim was hooked up to the baby bird. It made him breathe, and it pulled him through. I gather the Turnbulls owe a great deal to Forrest Bird. Without Forrest Bird. <laughs> great man. The story will continue after this. The great man is 86 now, still certified to fly. He lives and works at a breathtaking 300-acre compound on Lake Ponderé, just south of the Canadian border. Here, Forrest Bird has invented his own private Idaho. I've kind of recreated similar to what I had as a young lad growing up in New England. It's almost a fantasy, this place. It's fun. We enjoy it. Think of it as a combination home, business center, factory, museum, and farm. Here where the deer and the baby buffalo play, Bird routinely works a 12-hour day, conferring with doctors who come from around the world for his expertise, overseeing a staff of 40 who assemble the newest generation of bird respirators, okay, writing, so lecturing, on. flying, and still tinkering. Where does he get the energy from? He has to get it from heaven because there's days where there's, if I was one day older, I don't think I could keep up with him. <laughs> His second wife, Pam, met Bird through her work bringing inventors and investors together. The first time he took her up in a plane, he did some aerial acrobatics. It was love at first flight. And he did the spins and the flips. And when we had landed, he looked at me and he goes, well, what do you think about that? And I looked at him and I said, is that all you can do? <laughs> she did do. <laughs> you were trying to impress her? I was. <laughs> he was trying to see how much I could take. His late wife, Mary, had emphysema and was treated on many of Bird's respirators. She was always my first patient, but ultimately the lung was destroying itself. But we probably gave her a number of years of additional life, and probably it sparked me too in turn to push further and develop. He's a legend in aviation and medicine, but something of a mystery to his Idaho neighbors, which is why he recently invited everyone over for the opening of a museum showcasing his inventions and his toys. There was an air show starring stunt pilot Patty Wagstaff. She did enough spins and flips to put Forrest Bird to shame and she officially opened Bird's Museum by cutting a ribbon flying upside down 15 feet off the runway. Oh, wow. That's great. You're the greatest. Thank you, Patty. And that's a major compliment coming from someone whose father taught him to fly 75 years ago, who's piloted almost every kind of aircraft there is. Forrest Bird's own private Idaho includes his own private Air Force. How many planes you got? I think 21 <laughs> helicopters. We have three helicopters, the rest are airplanes. They're all flyable. You yeah. use all these planes? Yes, I How do. How does one guy use I fly them? one at a time. <laughs> <laughs> He's a king-size pack rat, collecting and restoring old planes, old cars, even old motorcycles, and they all come with stories. Admire his collection of old Fords, and he'll tell you about meeting the man himself, Henry Ford. Talk about his vintage biplanes, and he'll tell you about meeting, as a teenager, one half of the Wright brothers, Orville. And I thought he was God. Now, these are amphibious floats. Talk about float planes he's had over the years, and he'll tell you about flying them several times with the 20th century's most mysterious man, Howard Hughes who, even in his last reclusive days, could not resist taking a spin with Forrest Bird. He had a stocking cap on and a beard and so on, and other than basically his voice, I didn't recognize him. He said, let's go. He was a magnificent pilot all the way, and he totally enjoyed it. And we came back, and he said, well, how much do I owe you? I said, Mr. Hughes, you know, I get great enjoyment out of it. But the flying experience that astonished him most was the encounter he had as a teenager 
outside Boston one afternoon in 1937. I was heading east, and I saw this massive thing in the sky. I flew up alongside of it, and I first saw the SWAT sticker on the end, and then I came back. It was the great German Zeppelin Hindenburg, nearing the end of what would be its final voyage. That was awe-inspiring, truly awe-inspiring. Hours later, Bird and the world would hear what happened when the Hindenburg tied up at Lakehurst, New Jersey. It'll be with me all my life. Over the years, he had a couple of close calls of his own. The fish got to swim and birds got to fly, and this bird will not be grounded. A lot of people might feel just a tad uncomfortable flying with an 86-year-old pilot at the helm. What do you say to people like that? I tell them that the FAA figures that uh, I'm safe. Matter of fact, he says, in some air emergencies, pulling out of a dive without blacking out, for instance, it's the old guy you want at the controls. We have arterial sclerosis. Now, a young fellow, 25, will black out faster than we will because our arteries are harder and they're less expansive, so we maintain our blood pressure better. These, these the are facts. the first case I've ever heard that anyone make for hardening of the arteries. Yeah, that's right, but this is fact. I mean, absolute fact. Textbook, right? So you have no intention of packing it in? No way. They'll pack me in when they put me in a box, right? And that seems unlikely anytime soon. Forrest Bird thrives on work and flying, and on the knowledge of the difference his inventions have made in countless lives. His offices are covered with thank yous from children and adults saved by bird respirators. What are you most proud of? I guess probably, let's say the baby bird. Which brings us back to the Turnbulls, who have not one but two reasons to thank Forrest Bird. One is Tim, the baby saved from that terrible highway accident. The other is Tim's brother, Rob born two months prematurely. The baby bird respirator saved his life as well. <laughs> you caught me flat-footed this morning here. <laughs> Seeing these two strapping young men as grown-ups produced in Forest Bird a rare condition. He was almost speechless. <laughs> I really am, I'm astounded. <laughs> and so we leave Birdman, back in the element he loves most back in the wild blue yonder of Idaho, in the plane his daddy bought in 1939. Four, three, two, one. Clearing the runway.